Over two years ago, I decided I needed to turn my life around and transform my body and mind. If you clicked on this video for the same reason, I got you. I'm not going to lie, the journey will have its ups and downs, but with the eight habits I want to share with you, it will help you create a life and habits you can stick to. Once you start, you'll never look back. Remember, physical changes are what you see here, but the mental changes are going to be your proudest achievement. It's what got me from this to this. I'm guessing if you clicked on this video, you are looking for that bit of external motivation. The New Year's passed, you might have set your New Year's resolution, and it could be getting back into shape, getting healthy, having your mindset refreshed, and just feeling overall better. You could be like, you're going at 2023 with just wanting to be the best version of yourself. So I'm going to give you eight tips on exactly how to do that and how I transform my body from this to this because I did exactly this probably nearly two years ago now and I've been able to maintain and keep this consistent lifestyle and just this brand new version of me because they are lifestyle habits that just will transform your life. A huge difference on your mindset. You've already made the decision to transform something in yourself and that is already like the biggest step because it takes a lot to hit that mindset. And once you do, you'll just never look back. So implement these eight steps and you'll continuously have a very seamless journey and to help you stay accountable. And it will never feel like you're in a diet that's making you like you might hit eight weeks and you just hit a wall because they were so strict and these rules weren't actually habits that you're forming. They were just a guideline that you had to hit for eight weeks. So these are definitely habits you will form and you'll just come naturally from here on out. Number one, I have gone on about this before. Best tip when you are starting to maybe go into a calorie deficit is you need to be volume eating. It's not about having a tiny little plate with a tiny little bit of chicken. You do not want to be starving. Volume eating will have lower calories than what maybe you're used to, but you feel like you're still consuming the same amount. Your body still feels like it's having such a delicious full meal that you are satiated. Last you longer until your next meal, despite the calories being lower than what maybe you were used to. So I'm going to give you a comparison so you can visually see it and understand what volume eating is and how it's all about making swaps for maybe something you were so used to eating and how you can get 10 times more the volume or sometimes, maybe not 10 times, but you can get almost double the volume for way lower calories. So for instance, if you had a banana, it's about 100 grams and it's only 89 calories roughly. Anything, it is the perfect pre-workout snack. But compared to banana chips, if you have 100 grams of banana chips, it is 519 calories. 519 calories for 100 grams of banana chips or 89 calories for 100 grams of a banana. Which one is going to make you more full? Definitely the banana. The banana chips, you're going to want to keep eating them. If anything, you'll probably end up eating more. And before you know it, you've eaten your whole day's worth of calories. So it's a really good way to compare that you can eat the same amount of weight, but the volume will be very different. You'll feel satiated from one or the other. And the calories are significantly different. And it's all about unprocessed foods. There is a big difference between the banana and the banana chips in also your nutrient content. So if you're going to be having lower calories, you also would be wanting to fuel your body correctly. So not only you're swapping out processed foods for unprocessed foods, you're also just getting much better nutrient content and more volume for less calories. So it's a no brainer. Okay. Tip number two is eight hours of sleep. It's, it's no lie. When everyone says you need eight hours of sleep or you see that person running off four hours of sleep, they got the bags under their eyes, they're making simple little mistakes during their day to day, they're a bit more stressed, they're not able to be as rational. So therefore, when you're also maybe going through a transformation and you're hitting the gym, you're trying to strength train, you're not going to be able to hit those gains. You will lack the energy in the gym, you will lack the energy to in your personality. And when you're already maybe on lowered calories, you're already a bit more irritable. So eight hours sleep are going to help put a stop to that as much as possible. And it's going to energize you. Sleep does a lot more than just energy. It is a vital, vital component to our life that we need for our body to run smoothly. So eight hours of sleep, start making a priority, start switching off your phone onto automatic do not disturb. That is my biggest tip on how to get to bed earlier. Okay, tip number three, it kind of goes on from volume eating, but it is high protein intake. 
This is my biggest tip to anyone who even says they're going through kind of a journey, a weight loss journey, and they don't want to track calories necessarily. I say if you don't, if you get a bit fixated on a number, just focus on your protein component. Hitting your protein target every day is so, so important. A lot of people don't even realize how much they're actually missing their protein, but with the tips we've already mentioned on volume eating and making those swaps and swapping out even your current protein sources for maybe better optimal protein sources because protein is so essential for your whole body and especially while you're going through a transformation. Hitting your protein intake is going to help you feel satiated for longer, especially when maybe you're on lower calories. Your high protein, high volume, you're going to feel full. Other tip to having protein in your diet, it is full of all the essential amino acids your body needs. Your body needs these essential amino acids to help build and repair your muscles, especially if you're now starting strength training, if you are you're pushing your muscles to the limit. You need protein to help repair and build them so you can continuously get results from your hard work and also be able to keep working out because otherwise your body will be not nourished enough from this hard work and therefore you'll probably start to notice that you can't train as hard. So you definitely need to be hitting your protein intake. Protein intake goes for your whole life. <laughs> so don't just stop after you might hit your goal and you aren't maybe going through your whole transformation. You should be hitting your protein target every day. And it's not about having to track your whole life to make sure you are. Once you make these swaps, you will just intuitively know that each meal, what you're eating, that you're getting a good source of protein. Tip number four is incidental, just extra active living. So instead of taking the elevator up to work, you will take the stairs. Making those small little changes will make a difference. If you're parked at the supermarket, park the furthest car park away so that you have to walk longer to get to the supermarket. Not only will you notice you'll hit your step intake probably way quicker if you're keeping an eye on how many steps you're doing. It's a perfect way to hit it without getting to the end of the day being like, oh my gosh, I have to go on a 3K walk because I still have 3,000 steps to do. So make accidental active living that will make a difference in kind of energy expenditure. You're going to be using more energy throughout your day. And then you've hit two targets in one. You've done your house chores, you vacuumed the house, maybe those steps will all add up. So Okay, number five is resistance training. I love resistance training. So getting in the gym, this might be very daunting for some of you, but I promise you'll note a huge difference. Any of you might just associate it with building bigger muscles and hitting those gym goals, which yes, they are some of the benefits, but the biggest benefits of resistance training are things like your bone density, living longer, a better mindset. Trust me, if you're someone in the gym, you will know how much of a difference it makes. After you have hit a hard resistance training workout, you know the feeling of the endorphins that get released. And the things you might have been stressing about earlier on in the day I'm sure they have at least lowered by 50% resistance training makes a huge difference to your mental health your physical health there's literally no negatives it's also a great way to improve your mobility your flexibility and your muscle tone start resistance training on this journey it is not only a very rewarding experience as well so I can see no going wrong. You're also, you're in your own lanes. Along with resistance training is, I would say, pair it with having a coach. Someone to guide you on how to do all your movements correctly, avoiding injury, and having someone to motivate you, push you, give you a guideline on what to do in the gym. Having a coach will not only give you a lot less room for error, a lot less setbacks, because it's someone who can guide you in all the things that maybe you don't want to research and kind of learn about. You just want to tackle the gym. So you want someone to kind of give you a helping hand with that. And a coach can be the perfect thing for that. It's the best investment you will ever do. Number six, it has to be my favorite tip, my favorite advice to give to you all, and it is caffeine. If you've watched my previous videos, you all know I've tried caffeine detoxes. I have tried everything with caffeine because I never used to drink caffeine until I kind of went on this journey of wanting to have a transformation. I wanted to just fix my life. I wanted to get back in the groove of life and loving it and having energy and caffeine will give you that. <laughs> I 
can tell you, there is not many benefits from a caffeine detox other than lowering your caffeine tolerance so that then when you do have caffeine again, you get the rush, you get that hit, and honestly, your life's better with caffeine in it. So, I highly, highly recommend coffee. It is one of the most natural sources of caffeine. It will give you the burst of energy, particularly if you're on lowered calories. You are missing a bit of energy from your normal day-to-day -day maintenance food or calorie intake. So caffeine can be that buffer. It can give you that extra source of energy to still hit your workouts. Even when you're feeling a bit lower in energy, caffeine will give you that boost. It is, it's honestly your best friend for energy and for motivation because I know after I've had my coffee, I'm a beast in the gym. So everybody get onto caffeine if you're already not, but I'm sure you weren't as silly as me who went like 21 years without caffeine. You're probably already having some source of caffeine. And I would say during a shred, a deficit, a transformation, now is not the time to stop. So caffeine is definitely the biggest tip. Tip number seven is stress management. One of the biggest things you're going to notice while in a transformation is you want to avoid as many kind of stress triggers, anything in your life that's just adding unnecessary stress. You need to have a way to kind of outsource it, to let it out and to not let it build up because it is going to set you back. It's going to set not only your mindset back, but your physical health. Stress has such an outcome on our whole body. And I know for me, during a deficit, when I'm in lower calories, you're likely to be a bit more susceptible to stress. So you want to make sure you have strategies in place to help manage when those stresses do arrive. So this leads on to tip number eight, my final tip, and it is self-reflecting, self-reflecting within this journey. You need to constantly be checking in with yourself. It isn't going to help your mindset. You're going to help see your goals ahead of you and why you're on this journey. So being self-reflective, having your why. And the ways I've done this is through journaling, chatting to like-minded people. You might actually find when you go through a big transformation in your life, you'll probably lose a lot of friends or you might have to just spend less time with people who aren't really on the same wavelength as you or they're not being supportive on this change you're going through. So definitely make sure you're surrounding yourself with only like-minded people. You might start to train with someone who's on the same journey or having your coach that you can always rely on and you can let them know when you're feeling down. It doesn't have to always be about your training. So definitely make sure you have a coach that suits you and someone who's checking out for your hormonal profile because when your hormones start to dip, it definitely means maybe you're in a bit too much of a steep calorie deficit and you don't want that. You want to still be having a great hormonal profile because it's going to help you manage those stresses and you're going to be able to hit your goals. Make sure you keep checking back in with yourself along this entire journey. There's going to be stages throughout this journey where maybe you feel like, oh, I've hit a plateau and I'm, I don't see any changes, but you will be surprised. You need to take your transformation picks, look at them, get away from the number on the scale, and just look at your transformation, start to understand through your journal and maybe the things you've written, go back to your first few journal entries and see how much your mindset has changed. So don't ever feel like you're not making changes a little bit and you start to feel that big plateau. But also, if you kind of have fallen off the bandwagon along this journey, that does happen. Self-reflecting is when you're going to have to admit it to yourself and you're going to have to pick yourself back up. And it's something you'll probably implement then for the rest of your life. You'll keep journaling, you'll keep checking in with yourself. And that is how you constantly make those positive changes and understand things that you need to maybe improve on. Okay, I've definitely spat out my eight tips for you because I'm passionate about them. I think they are going to make a huge difference while you're on this transformation that I'm, I'm excited excited for you. If you've made it this far, you now have eight tips you can take with you, implement them into your life every single day, and you will start to see some huge changes. When I did my transformation, there is only a kilo or two difference. It is also not always about the number. It is about the mindset change and how you can just recomp your body. You might not notice a huge difference on the scale. So definitely check in with yourself, take those pictures, look back and be proud of how far you've come, have your why and know exactly why you're on this journey. And bottom line is you will notice a huge change in your mindset, your mental health and your physical health. So 
I'm excited for you on this journey. I wish you all the best. Comment below if you have any more questions. Something I love because honestly, I just, if I hadn't have stepped into this journey, I wouldn't be here making this video for you all. So it is definitely a special place for me to be able to share this knowledge with you and those eight tips that made a huge difference in my life. So thank you so much for clicking on this video and I wish you all the best and lots of love from Lily Bell Lips.